eyes. Um, lastly, here is another requested video. Uh, don't know how interesting this one will be, but this is um, Dorian's birth story. So uh, I don't know how far back you wanted me to go, but let's see. Um, basically, I'll go from, I guess, the start because it's not too much to tell. I never wanted kids. I was with Dorian's dad for quite some time. He was my first real boyfriend and I was just having fun being young and just whatever I was doing and I wasn't ready for kids. I didn't want kids and so I was on the pill. And I remember exactly my neighbor across the way, like my mom's house was here and out the front door you can see the street over here, the corner house. There's this girl Stacy I used to talk to and Stacy popped up pregnant and she's a few years older than me and I remember thinking like haha you're pregnant that'll never be me and I was gloating and laughing because she was freaking out um, and the next thing I know I found out I was pregnant and I was like oh fuck what do I do and I freaked the fuck out and my mom instantly said you need to have an abortion you're too young you can't have that baby and I said what the fuck um, why would I have an abortion and she was like, well, you don't want kids. And I said, well, I know, but I, you haven't even given me a chance to think about this yet. She said, you're a kid. You're high school dropout. Where's the father? Because his dad had dumped me as soon as he found out I was pregnant. And she's like, no, you don't want this. And you can't support yourself. You can't support that baby. You don't have a job. You don't have anything. And, you know, you just you can have a baby later. You don't need one right now. And um, I was just like, I don't want to. I my kitty cat stopped the video. Look, look kitty cat, why'd you stop the video? That was mean. See that mommy was talking. She's so tired. She's such a tired girl. Come on, Lade. Are you tired? Aren't you pretty? Are you pretty? No, oh, you're gonna go night night. Anyway, um I know you're happy. Look at that little face. Really? She's just gonna go to sleep in my arms. <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, she, she was telling me to have an abortion, and I said, no, I didn't want to have an abortion. She didn't give me a chance to think about it. She was just trying to force me into it. And I said, that was pretty fucked up. And then, um, she said, I could just have a baby later, and I was like, no. Something just didn't feel right. I, even though I didn't want a kid, I also knew I didn't want to just kill an innocent baby. And um, I had a baby shower, like when I was maybe seven months. Like I remember, I didn't even start showing like for the longest time. I was actually disappointed because I kept going to my doctor's appointments and um, everybody else was like really big and pregnant. And I'm there, this little girl, I wasn't showing flat stomach and I was just like, when's it going to be my turn? And finally, when I hit like six months, I just exploded and I pretty much looked like I was ready to drop. I don't know what the hell happened, but I went from not looking pregnant to suddenly looking like I was about ready to have them. And it was so funny. Um, but I went through the whole thing alone. I had nobody, no friends. I mean, I was 18. No, I was 17 when I was pregnant. I was 18 when I had him. And it was kind of really still looked down on because I was considered very, 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 very young. And my mom's friends were kind of like, baby having a baby kind of thing, kind of judging me and stuff. And that really sucked. And then, um, you know, of course his dad had dumped me. I had no friends. I had nobody. And I just, I don't know, like my whole life changed really. Um, I don't know. It was, it was really hard, but I knew I made the right choice even so. I wasn't necessarily excited about the fact that I was going to be a mom, I wasn't like, oh my god, I'm going to be a mom. It was just like, there's a baby inside of me. This is really weird. I can feel this thing moving around. Like, there's a living mini me in me. This is just so surreal. And my mom made it very hard on me because every time I tried to touch my stomach, rub my stomach, rest my hands on my tummy, she would come and tell me not to because she said that I would spoil the baby inside. And so I wasn't allowed to 
even feel him kicking or moving or anything like she, she made me keep my hands off of him she controlled what I watched and what I ate what I did um, she made my life a living hell pretty much um, the pregnancy was not enjoyable for me because of that it was no let's go look for baby clothes let's go look for baby things let's go baby this baby that nothing it was just you're pregnant shameful you're alone what are you gonna do with your life give him up for adoption have an abortion you're having a little girl and I was like nope fuck that I'm having a boy no you're having a girl and like you know even that was an argument just to try to make me miserable and um, yeah it was just pretty uneventful I didn't have morning sickness anything like that it was a really breezy breezy pregnancy I had actually decided uh, afterwards I wanted to be a surrogate because my pregnancy went so well I was like I would love to I don't want any more kids but I want to surrogate for somebody else because I love the feeling of being pregnant unfortunately I was never able to get pregnant again so I was not able to surrogate and then I ended up looking for a surrogate myself and nothing um, you know but whatever and um, I remember when uh, like after a little while I got into a fight with my parents because we were always fighting they kicked me out and I went and stayed with this guy I hated the guy but he was the only one that let me stay with him and I had nowhere else to go and I was with him for a little while a couple months and um, we got into an argument and he punched me in the stomach when I was pregnant with Dorian and I ran jumped out the window took off running and ended up calling cops spent the night in the ball pit of Taco Cabana <laughs> cops took me there and left me there until I could go back to my parents house and I did they took me back in still wasn't great wasn't easy very lonely sad kind of pregnancy and um, discovered my parents had sold off everything I owned um, just because they didn't want it in their house my books and stuff and I read up everything I could in pregnancy magazines and stuff about what to expect I actually had everything like figured out you know before I had him which just goes to show that nothing ever goes to plan because um, I had decided to breastfeed. I was like, I'm going to breastfeed him. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Everything's going to be perfect. And I wasn't able to do any of it. Um, my mucus plug fell out at about three o'clock in the morning. I got up and I went to the toilet and I wiped and there was this sticky yellow blob thing on the toilet paper. And I was like, oh my God, what is that? It's disgusting. And I saved it in the piece of toilet paper. And I called 911 and I was like, I'm pregnant and I just went to the toilet and this big yellow thing came out of me. I don't know what it is. And they said, oh, that's your mucus plug. Um, you should be giving birth anytime between now and the next 24 hours. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. And I went to my bed and I put down um, garbage bags to protect my bed because I knew my water was going to break. And I went to sleep about nine o'clock in the morning. My water broke on the bags so I didn't have to worry about a mess. And I banged on the door, woke up my mom, and I was like, Mom, my water broke. And she's like, ugh. And I can hear my parents talking. She's like, hold on, hold on. I need my coffee first. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? And she actually sat there and drank her coffee and put on her makeup and things. And I'm like having contractions faster and faster. And actually, this was January 3rd, and I had been having contractions since... Um, December 27th but they were three minutes apart December 27th and um, I went to that was my last appointment oh, look at my little girl I'm still holding her by the way she still hasn't moved I don't know if you can see marmalade mommy has to put you down soon uh, I'll put you down okay you can lay on my leg there you go there you go anyway um I know it's awful bright. Anyway, so she jumped down now, finally. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I gone to my last checkup, because you go, you know, like once a month, once a month, and as you get closer to giving birth, then it's like once or twice a week that you go. And so um, I had just gone in and they were like, oh, you're four centimeters dilated, your contractions are three minutes apart. And I was like, ooh, maybe I'll have a Christmas baby. And I was like, come on, come on, or not Christmas, New Year's, come on, come on, and nothing happened, and like, I was like, come on, I was so disappointed that he didn't pop out and be the first New Year's baby, but 
he didn't, and I could feel my contractions, yeah, three minutes apart, but I don't know, nothing happened, and after my mom was done with her makeup, we got in the car and drove to the hospital, and I remember then the pain started, and it hurt so bad, I was like screaming, ah, oh, it hurts so much, oh, help me, help me, She's like, I'm going as fast as I can, which she really wasn't. And I was like, come on, now we need a cop or somebody. Just you know, get me to the hospital as fast as possible. And um, we got to the hospital. She left me standing by the sign, Beaumont Medical Hospital, uh, Army Hospital. And uh, I was there hunched over like, oh, oh. And she went to go park the car. And then some lady, some nurse came by and asked me, you know, if I needed help, how I was doing, and I turned, and she saw that I was pregnant, she's like, oh, are you having a baby, and I said, yes, and, um, she went inside and got a wheelchair for me, and they wheeled me inside, laid me down on the bed, cut my underwear off, I was, like, eight centimeters dilated or something, I was, I was massive, I was pretty much ready already, they wouldn't give me any water, I was so thirsty, and I had wanted an epidural, couldn't get that, couldn't get any painkillers whatsoever, because he was, he was already coming and I was there in the bed screaming I was pushing down so hard and I was grabbing the posts and I was like oh my god and then when I got to breathe I was like it was so much more fun getting into this than it is getting out of it and they were just like unamused and um it just hurt so much I was like I never ever ever want another kid again never 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 and I was like tie my tubes tie my tubes now do something I just don't ever want to go through this again but I was too young I was only 18 and so you have to be 21 to get your tubes tied luckily in a way so they didn't do it for me and um yeah it sucked but uh I think it was like 9.30 when we went to the hospital and I had him at 10.04. So it was, it was just textbook perfect, even though I had like no painkillers or anything. And when he came out, they didn't even tell me what I had because there weren't many ultrasound appointments. So I never actually got to know the sex. I knew it was a boy though. And, um, my mom kept saying, no, you're going to have a girl. And I was like, nope, I'm going to have a boy. And when he came out, I was like, they gave him to my mom and I was like, hello, you know, and they're like, oh, do you want to see your baby? And I was like, yeah, I, I didn't even get to see him at all, like at all until he was cleaned up and then he was brought into my room later. Like I didn't get that first mommy moment to hold my baby and to be like, oh, this is my, I didn't get any of that shit. It actually quite pissed me off. Um, and then they said, oh, you had a boy. And I was like, a fucking thank you for that. And, um, I missed, yeah, I had completely forgotten that I missed the whole bonding moment. And I didn't get to know how much he weighed or anything like that. They just took him, wrapped him up here to my mom, acted like I wasn't even really there, even though at 18, technically I wasn't exactly a child and I had just gone through this fucking shit. My skin ripped wide open, not just a little tear, it tore quite a bit. And they had students in there as they're sewing my vagina back up, which really sucked. And I broke my tailbone. Um, they tried to tell me I had, uh, hemorrhoids and I was like they're not hemorrhoids when I sit up I can hear that crack crunch as my tailbone and I can feel it and so they did x-rays and said oh yeah you've broken your tailbone but there's nothing that we could do about it we can't stick a cast up there so I've had tailbone pain since then um almost 22 years now it hasn't stopped um although it's been worse since I've lost weight and um Finally, they brought him into my room, and that was the most awful thing because they had me in a room with three other women, and I, again, I had no friends, no family. I was there by myself, and me and Dorian were there, and um, I could hear the other women coming in, you know, their, their families coming in, or the daddies coming in, and balloons and everything, and everybody's celebrating, oh, it's your new baby, oh, and I'm just there, no visitors, just by myself. We had nobody. My dad didn't come see me. My brother didn't come see me. My mom came a couple of times and my psychiatrist, my therapist came and brought him a little pair of pajamas. And, um, this girl that I was actually enemies with, like frenemies with came and she was jumping and jumping on my bed. And I was like, every move was agony because of my tailbone. And I told her she was causing me a lot of pain and she didn't care. Just I'm doing what now? What? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, one of those girls. 
and um, I was just so happy when she left, but I didn't, I didn't have anybody else to share in the joy. All I had was my mom saying, well, it's too late to abort now. You give them up for adoption. Like, no. And then when she found out I had a boy, I've always wanted a boy. And then she like basically took him from me. So once I got him, well, when we were in the hospital, those three days are the only three days that I had him to myself. As soon as we got home, she meddled just like she did when I was pregnant. And it was like, she would come in. I would lock my door. She'd pick the lock, come in. Why are you holding that baby? You're going to spoil him. Let me take him. And then she'd take him. I couldn't hold him. I couldn't cuddle him. I couldn't do anything with him. I didn't have any bonding time with him. He had colic. He cried all the time. I didn't know how to deal with him because I wasn't really allowed to touch him. And the only time I got him to myself again was when I got into a fight with my mom. She slapped me and I reflexively slapped her back. And my dad beat the fuck out of me and called the cops on me and took us both to a homeless shelter. And my son was two months old at that time. So I didn't have any good memories, uh, motherhood memories. This is why I had been wanting a baby so bad because I, I don't know what it's like to have a baby with somebody who wants a baby and to be able to enjoy being pregnant without the pressures of somebody telling you every single day that you need to have an abortion you're too young you're going to ruin your life you've got nothing the baby won't know any better just get rid of it and you know you've got to justify yourself to your own mother that really sucked and and then after the birth you don't even get to have time with your own baby because every time you touch him or you hold him or you feed him you're yelled at and screamed at that you're going to spoil him and you're not allowed to do that but she is and she's telling her friends and everybody else that it's not my baby it's actually her baby to the point where on the one chance I had that I was holding him and feeding him her friend comes in and says why are you holding that baby that's not your baby and it's like what the fuck this is my baby and that's what we kind of had to live with and um I, I missed out on all that. Like, I have no idea what it's like to actually be in a, an, a family and have a baby and have my baby to myself and be like, this is my baby and I'm going to do things my way and I'm going to, you know, whatever. And because he was born lactose intolerant, I couldn't even breastfeed. So I didn't even get that bonding. Like, no, mom, I have to feed my baby because he needs my milk. I can't even, I couldn't even do that. So it's obviously something that I will never experience maybe I wished too hard when I wished that I never wanted another baby again because it's that's what's happened and you know uh, 20 years now has resulted in absolutely nothing and it's it's hard because you see people and they're like well at least you have one and it's like and I I gave birth to one but I don't know what it's like to be a mother to one not from the start not not what a mother is supposed to be. I didn't even get to enjoy my own pregnancy and I should have enjoyed it because like I didn't get swollen ankles. I didn't get sick. I didn't get anything. It was just like skinny to pregnant to having them just slide out. I mean, everything was just as perfect as could be and I couldn't even enjoy it. And, um, it was really, really hard. And as far as being judged for the way I looked, I was judged. I mean, I just had long black hair. Really? I didn't really look much different. I'll put a picture. But I didn't really look very different for back then. It was quite different and people judged me for being young and stuff. But I had um, Child Protective Services called on me constantly by my mom because she wanted my son. And so she kept trying to have him taken from me, but there was nothing that they could legally do because I wasn't doing anything wrong. This was after we went to homeless shelter. And um, I had Child Protective Services called on me once when I was a nanny because we had moved in with this family and I was a nanny for like four or five kids and the guy came in and it was in the middle of the day I was in a refurbished garage so there was no window so it was dark me and Dorian were napping and he came in and it was dark because we were napping and my hair was black and my clothes were black and he called child services on me because of that and um yeah it was it was pretty hard going for quite some time and then my parents said well 
your father's military, because my stepdad has retired military, and um, he could get all the medical benefits, just give give uh, custody of him to us, and we'll take care of him, and I was like, well, when would I get him back? And they're like, well, when we say that you're ready to have him, and I was like, well, what if I think I'm ready to have him, and you don't? And they're like, well, then you're not getting him, and I was like, no, well, I'm not signing him over, because what'll happen is I'll give you guys custody of Dorian, and I'll say I want my son back, and you'll keep coming up with excuses, and I'll never get him back, and I'm not doing that, and I'll handle it on my own, and so I did. I didn't, I didn't give him over to them, and, um, yeah, that was, I don't know, that was, I was about it, um, we've gone through a lot of shit, and somehow we've managed to be here today, and, I mean, he's still here, he's in that room there, he's pretty proud of himself, he bought this huge-ass TV today, and he's in there playing his games and yelling and screaming, and he bought me this yesterday, because <laughs> he saw me, um, he brought it to me and he saw me ooing because he knows it's my favorite Pokemon, well Charmander, and or Charizard, and so, you know, I mean we don't have a, we've always said we don't have a typical mother-son relationship. I don't see any way that we could given our history, but we're still close, as close as we can be. We just, we have a very different past than most parent children do, because mostly when you have a kid you have a kid and nobody kind of gets in the way of you having your kid and you're right to be around your kid but I was stopped every time I turned around somebody was there interfering whether it be my mom or um husbands you know oh, I don't want your kid around or I don't want you touching your kid because he looks like his dad and I don't want you thinking about his dad when you're bathing him like what the fuck do you think I'm gonna you know I'm not gonna molest him because he looks like his dad that's fucking sick but um, many, many years of missed, missed chances because of other people sticking their fingers in our lives and taking us away from each other and stuff. So, I don't know. I'm actually surprised that we get along so good considering everything we've been through, but we have, and that it is what it is. Um, I haven't given up, and he hasn't given up, and I guess that's what matters in, in the end. So I... I hope I've answered everything I was asked in that video. It's probably not the kind of birth story you guys were expecting. A lot of you already know all of this because you've been following me for a while, but for some of you that might not have known, there you go, you know now. And um, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys soon.